I would like to congratulate you all on the beautiful and auspicious event, occasion, the birth of our beloved Imam, the 12th Imam of Ahlul Bayt, Al Imam Al Mahdi Al Muntadar. My dear brothers and sisters, in my Arabic sermon, I said the belief in Al Imam Al Mahdi is not only limited to the Shia school of thought. All Muslims, Shia, Sunnis, Salafis, Wahhabis, Sufis, they all believe in the advent of Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Faraja. And I'm going to go back to that point soon. But now I would like to add one more point by saying that the belief in the Imam Al Mahdi is not even limited to Muslims. The followers of all monotheistic religions, including Jews and the Christians, they also believe in the return of Al Imam Al Mahdi. The only difference is they use different names. In the Jewish culture, they call him the Messiah. In the Christian culture, they call him Jesus Christ. And in our religion, according to our holy prophet, his name is Al Imam Al Mahdi Al Muntadr, the guided man from the family of the prophet all religions believe that in the end of the world there will be a man coming out bringing reform and justice to this world that is in much need for justice the world is so thirsty for justice and the world is so thirsty for a man who is supported and guided by God to save the humanity. There is one hadith, powerful hadith that has been narrated by all Muslims. All Muslims agree on this hadith. In which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam says, by the way, our Sunni brothers narrate over 400 over 400 hadith not one not two 400 hadith from the prophet in which the prophet speaks about the advent of imam al mahdi in one hadith my dear brothers and sisters the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says if there will be only one day prior to the day of judgment Allah shall prolong that day till a man from my own approaching whose first name is same as mine shall come out and bring justice to this world after it has been filled with injustice and aggression. So basically that's the mission of our Imam. To bring justice to this world, to this very troubled world. No other person can bring justice other than the Imam. No other person, no other figure can bring peace to this troubled world other than the Imam. My dear brothers and sisters, the United States of America, the mightiest and the most powerful country on earth, do you know how much it spends on defense? Over $600 billion a year. That's almost $2 billion a day the United States spent on defense out of the taxpayers' money to build an arsenal of arms 
from nuclear weapons to aircraft carriers to thousands of jets, fighting jets, to tanks, to all kind of weaponry. Over $600 billion the United States spends every year on defense. The question is, I'm not talking about Russia. I'm not talking about the European Union. I'm not talking about other countries. There are at least 200 countries, sovereign countries in this world, who each spend billions of dollars of their budget annually on defense. But the question is, has those, have those countries been able through those billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to establish justice and peace in this world? No. Still, the world is reeling from instability, civil wars, bloodshed. Basically, every spot in this world is reeling from instability. The more we become advanced, the more richer the nations become, the more mightier we become, the more sophisticated we become, the more troubled the world becomes. And the more strife we face and more civil wars we experience. Look at the situation today in the Middle East, my dear brothers and sisters. The war that is striking the Middle East. In Syria, over 500,000 people have been killed so far. In Iraq, since the invasion, the American invasion, over 1 million people were killed. In Afghanistan, hundreds of thousands of people have been killed since the civil war in Lebanon and in Afghanistan during the 90s till now. In Pakistan, hundreds of people are killed on a weekly basis to do sectarian fights. In Nigeria, hundreds of people are being killed every month by terrorists who claim to be speaking for Islam. In Mali, in other spots, in Palestine, in Yemen, in Yemen over six million people have been displaced. Over 23 million people in Yemen are facing starvation and famine. Two days ago there was a report in the New York Times that the, according to the World Health Organization, that the Yemeni crisis is the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today. Millions of people are facing death, starvation, and diseases. Cholera is spreading so fast in Yemen. In Palestine, Israel has been persecuting the Palestinian people for over 60 years now, displacing millions of them, sending millions of them to exile. Why the world, the very sophisticated, enlightened world, has not been able to stop all those atrocities? Why? Where is the problem? Is it because they lack weapon? No. They do not lack, lack any weapon. Is it because they lack money? No, they don't. Is it because physically they are not capable of stopping this bloodshed? That's not a true. Simply because the system 
The current political system thrives on a bloodshed, thrives on instability. Who created ISIS, my dear brothers and sisters? Who created Al-Qaeda? Who pushed those terrorists? Who bankrolled them? Who, who paid them? Who financed them? We all know who. It is not a secret anymore. We all know who is behind those terrorists who are aimed at defaming the image of Islam and make a mockery out of our faith. We all know who is behind them. We know who has been supporting them and financing them. It is not a secret anymore. It's a public information. So, that means those political entities, the United Nations Security Council, all those governments, either they lack the will or the, uh, the instrument to stop those atrocities. And the only one who can bring peace and justice to this world is not a politician. Politicians thrive on civil disorder. They thrive on dissension. That is their job. My dear brothers and sisters, go and watch what they are saying now about the financing those terrorist organizations, supporting them. We know who is supporting them. We know that the money and the finances they are getting, it's not coming from Jupiter or Mars. It is coming from this world, from certain superpowers who are aiming at causing more and more civil disorder in our region, particularly in the Middle East. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, I believe the only one who can bring peace back is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his agent, through Imam al-Mahdi, Allah farajah, where he is going to appear in Mecca when we don't know that. No one exactly knows when the Imam shall appear, but I really hope that we live long to be able to see him and to join him. Along with Jesus alayhi salam and many millions of Muslims and Christians, peace-loving individuals, he will be able to reform this world and put an end for this trouble and for bloodshed يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا بعد ما ملأت ظلما وجورا he shall bring peace and justice to this world after it's been rocked and stricken by violence and injustice we long for that day and we hope inshallah that day will be soon Soon enough that we will be able to witness it and to participate in it and to be part of it and to be part of those who support Al Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. My dear brothers and sisters, as I'm concluding, I 